I've built a pedal board exclusively for Blues Junior. <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett and welcome to this video where I'm going to share with you this custom pedal board that I've built specifically with a Fender Blues Junior in mind. Now, if you're new to the channel, first of all, please like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm supposed to say all this stuff. I don't like saying this stuff. You guys don't want me to say this stuff, but I gotta say this stuff. It's just... It is what it is. It's the world that we live in. Moving right along. So the idea behind building these custom pedal boards, this is a series that I'm doing, and this is the third video in the series. And what happened was, as a gear demoer and someone who's also into trading, buying, selling gear and things, I had quite a collection of pedals, and many pedals that I liked that wound up just kind of sitting on the shelf collecting dust, because, you know, there's only so many that you use at a given moment, and when you have a whole bunch of them, there could be pedals that you absolutely love that just don't necessarily fit what you're doing, maybe they don't integrate in a board the way that you want them to, you know, maybe they don't work with a particular amp that you're using at the time. So I started to think, you know, why don't I put together unique pedal boards tailored towards specific amplifiers and, and really pick out the pedals that work the best with those individual amps. So today we're tackling the Blues Junior. Now, here's a couple of disclaimers before we move on. First thing is, this board definitely has more than a lot of you will need. Uh, it's not a huge board, it's not like a Star Destroyer bridge or anything like that, and it it's not simple in the sense where it's just one or two pedals to kind of give you a couple of extra sounds. It's kind of in the middle, but it definitely has some things on here that some of you won't need or use. That's fine. I'm kind of trying to cover all the bases, and this is all stuff that I use and I think sounds really cool with this amplifier. The other thing is that this obviously is not just for a Blues Junior. This is a great sounding pedal board, if I do say so myself, and this would sound great into a lot of different amplifiers. Again, the idea was just to find particular pedals that work well with this amp, kind of go from there. Now, having done many videos of the Fender Blues Junior and having gotten some great responses over the years from many of you saying things like, you know, that you really value uh, things that I've said on how to dial it in, on recommendations of certain things, I want you to know that this video is one that I definitely don't take for granted the fact that many of you are going to be listening and possibly buying pedals due to what I'm putting together here. So I did think kind of especially hard on this one of like, okay, what is a really good pedal for this board? And I also tried to err on the side of things that are very available 
and things that aren't terribly expensive. There are some that are a little bit more expensive, but then there are also some that are very inexpensive on this board. So I tried to put together a best of the best of what I have that I think really works. So we're gonna dive right in now. Now, first of all, the first pedal on here is a tuner. It's a Korg Pitch Black tuner. That's the tuner that I have used the most. Now we are going to go to the first pedal on the board in the chain, which you have just heard in that kind of big outro of the intro, so to speak, and that is the Mojo Hand Crosstown. This is a fuzz pedal that is based on the fuzz face. It's a germanium silicon hybrid that gives you a lot of tonal flexibility from four knobs integrates really well, plays well with other pedals, just gives you an awesome tone. I kind of have it set up on the aggressive, fuzzier side. Now, the unique thing about this one is it has a body and a tone control, which really lets you dial in the amount of oomph and brightness that you want. And I initially got that one on here thinking I would have the body turned back because the Blues Junior is a pretty mid-rangey amp. But then when I actually dialed it in, I thought, oh no, it needs that body. So let's take a listen to the Mojo Hand Crosstown. <laughs> Next, we have a pedal that is actually my always on pedal for this board. The only reason that I don't have it first in the chain is because sometimes fuzzes like being first. The next pedal that I have on here is the Pigtronics Philosopher's Gold Germanium. This is a compressor. It actually could be used as an overdrive too with the grit knob. Here's what I use this for. I use this as kind of a sweetener, as kind of the basis of my tone. And it's a very warm pedal and it kind of rolls off a little bit of top end. Now, the compression I have set very low. You can boost the compression and use it like a compressor if you want to, but that's not necessarily the goal here. If you'll notice, I have the blend and the sustain turned back, the grit turned all the way off, and then the volume up a little bit. Using it this way, what it does is it kind of glues the notes together a little bit. It gives it kind of this sense of unity it eliminates some of the spikiness. Blues Juniors can be sort of notoriously spiky at times. And it really just adds a sweetness. And one of the other things that I like about it is by rolling the top end off and kind of adding some warmth to it, I have more range of the knobs on the Blues Junior. So I've actually pushed the treble and the mids a little higher on the amp itself than I would if I didn't have this pedal in the lineup. So right now we're just gonna listen to the clean tone that I'm getting with the Pigtronics. <laughs> Next up, we gotta have a basic overdrive. We gotta have a really good overdrive. Now, Blues Juniors can be very finicky with overdrives. This one, I'm very happy to say, this was the one I thought at first, like this would sound really good into it. And lucky for me, plugged it in and I thought, oh yeah, that's the sound. This is the MXR Duke of Tone. This is a new pedal. This is based on the Analog Man Prince of Tone and is a collaboration with Analog Man. Uh, great pedal, it's not, exactly a blues breaker tone. It has a little bit more mid-rangey oomph to it, but not nearly as much as a Tube Screamer would. Really just gives you a great straight up overdriven tone for anyone playing blues or whatnot. So let's take a listen to the Duke of Tone. <laughs> All 
All right, so I mentioned some pedals on here are very inexpensive. This one might surprise you, and this is great for anyone who likes to thumb your nose at tone snobs. Next up, we have the Boss DS1. This surprisingly just works. All right, you, you mentioned, oh, you plug a Boss DS1 into a Fender Blues Junior, and you are going to have people who are just like, oh, I bet that sounds terrible. It sounds awesome. The key to using the DS1 is to keep the tone and the gain back a little bit and to push it slightly volume-wise, at least slightly. This is kind of like a big, edgy, nice rhythm tone. It's not all-out distortion. It's not just a clean boost either, but it really adds some definition to the notes. It just sounds really awesome. Believe it or not, I actually had intended on using a Boss OD3 in this position. And I found that that one I didn't like into the Blues Junior at all. And so I kind of scrambled and went, ugh, not that one. What else do I have that would fit there? And so I thought, I'm going to try the DS1. And it really works. So let's take a listen to this great kind of crunch rhythm that you can get with the DS1. <laughs> Next up, we have probably my must-have pedal for this amplifier. If I could only use one pedal with the Blues Junior, this is it. This is going to be the pedal that... Here, here's it. So, I'm not a fan of the fat switch. Many of you know this. So, I don't have the fat switch on. This is going into the normal sound with the gain turned back. This is everything that the fat switch wishes it was. This is the Vic Audio Overdriver. Now, I do want to take this moment to mention that this is not at all a sponsored review. There's, I, some of these pedals I received as part of a sponsorship deal. Some of them I didn't, some of them I bought on my own. But this pedal board, uniquely, was not in any way involved with any sponsorship. That being said, I am a huge fan of Vic Audio. Vic Audio was the ones who got me into doing gear reviews. I absolutely love that company, and I would love to see them get more pedals out there. This is totally an objective opinion, and I think you'll probably hear this just sounds awesome. It gives you a nice boost. It can give you overdrive if you want. It can just give you a clean boost if you want. I have it somewhere in the middle. And the tone with this pedal is just really sweet into the Blues Junior. And again, it's kind of like, this is, this is what I wish the Fat Switch would do. I wish it would do this sound, not the sound that it does. Now, you'll notice that this one has some... I, I, I got this one used... You'll see that the person who I got it from, apparently the little tick marks had kind of worn down, just like, oh, yeah, well, well, ain't gonna spend money on any new knobs. Yeah, just grab a Sharpie, write them, write them lines in, she'll be good as new. I'm gonna change the knobs, but I mean, I had to keep them on there for the video. So anyway, let's take a listen to the Vic Audio Overdriver. <clears throat> Next up, we have an effect that I wish the Blues Juniors had built in. I wish Blues Juniors did not have the fat switch and rather had tremolo. They don't. So, we're using a tremolo pedal, and for this I'm using the Carl Martin Surf Trem. Really straight up, two knob, inexpensive, these are like a hundred bucks new, and it just sounds like an old-fashioned amplifier tremolo. It's very, very easy to use. You got speed and depth. One of the things I like about this one is it doesn't generate a lot of noise, and it doesn't give me any volume problems. Sometimes with a, you know, tremolo pedal, you might have a little, you know, like a dip in volume or a spike in volume or whatever it is. Obviously, it plays with your volume to a certain amount, so that can kind of be the nature of the beast. This one, you just click it on and it just sounds right. That's all I can say about it. It's just a great, straightforward tremolo. So let's take a listen to the Carl Martin Surf Trem. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, for the last two pedals on this board, now we are getting into a little bit more expensive and a little bit extra. Probably something that a lot of people won't need, but I'm gonna to explain to you kind of why I have it and why I like it. Next up, we have the Keeley Hydra. Now, the Keeley Hydra is a reverb and tremolo, and you might be saying to yourself, self, the Blues Junior has reverb, and he just played a tremolo. What's the deal? I'll tell you what the deal is. First of all, th there's something special about these last two pedals that we're going to get to in a few minutes, but I'm not a huge fan of the built-in reverb on the Blues Junior, and sometimes I like two different levels of reverb because I don't want to be washed out all the time, and the reverb on the Blues Junior is not foot switchable. The foot switch is for the fat switch. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm basically keeping a very light amount of reverb from the amp just because I don't really like a dry signal. And then if I want more reverb, I'm using the better tone, in my opinion, from the Keeley Hydra. This also has a number of different modulations on there, and I like something in the realm of a univibe or a harmonic tremolo or a phaser. I like to have something like that available to add some warmth and movement to your tone, kind of get some really classic, um, it's just different textures and things. So I have this set to harmonic tremolo for the tremolo side. So first here, we're going to listen to the amp dry and then kick on the reverb, and then we are going to hear the harmonic tremolo. <laughs> Now for the last pedal, you gotta have a delay pedal. Now this is a higher end delay. This is a bit more expensive. I'm gonna explain to you why I chose this one in a minute. It does sound great and I think it's totally worth it. It's a great pedal. This is the Wampler Metaverse. Now I have this set to tape, so I've got a nice warm vintage sounding echo. I don't have it set crazy deep, but we are gonna listen to it and just hear what a great kind of basic straight up rock delay this can give you. So that is the pedal board, start to finish. Before we move on to what was kind of special about this at the end there, let us know, what do you think? What would you keep? What would you trade for something else? What would you get rid of? What do you use? Do you have any recommendations? I do want to mention a couple of alternates that are pedals that I really like with the Blues Junior. One is from a small company. It's called the Hoopla Everyday Overdrive. That pedal works really, really well as kind of a tone sweetener or a basic overdrive. Uh, two others that I really like are the One Control Honeybee or the Silver Bee. Again, is something that kind of sets your tone and sort of sweetens up some of and rounds out, let's say, some of the Blues Junior's rough edges at times. Any of those pedals would have worked great on this board as well. They kind of didn't make it on the final board, but not for lack of quality. It's just kind of the way that things fit together. Now, some of you might have deduced this already, but one of the reasons that I have the Keeley Hydra and the Wampler Metaverse on there is because they will run in stereo. And with a Blues Junior being a small amp, it's very, very common and popular for a lot of players to run these in stereo, either with another Blues Junior or with another small amplifier. Now, I no longer have my Blues Junior 4. 
I have this one, which is the Blues Junior 3 Limited Edition with the Jensen speaker. The Blues Junior 4 is actually a better amplifier, in all honesty, but this one has nostalgic value for me, and I, I didn't really need two Blues Juniors. So what I am going to do for the end here is run in stereo, and I do happen to have another amplifier that is an American-voiced 112 combo that uses EL84s, and that is a Mesa Boogie Studio 22. Now, being that I'm using these clean, I thought that would be a good opportunity to show these off in stereo. So for the rest of the video, you're going to hear a number of stereo samples of various combinations of these pedals just to hear not only what these pedals can do, but what they can do if you play them in various combinations, whether you're going for just a cool blues overdrive with some nice heavier reverb, or whether you're going for a really cool crunch tone, or a crunchy hard rhythm tone where I use the DS1 along with the overdriver, or whether you're going for a heavy fuzz tone or just a basic great straight up kind of tone using the harmonic tremolo to bounce back and forth. We're going to hear a couple of tones to close out here. I do want to mention if you're Wanting to do something stereo and you don't want to shell out that kind of money, a decent option are TC Electronic pedals. Those are, I think, probably the best bang for the buck when it comes to going stereo. I wouldn't necessarily trust them if I were going to be using that on the road or for a lot of heavy gigging for a season. I've seen them kind of fall apart, but those are probably the obvious options. And then there are some other even cheaper options as far as going stereo. I do think the Keeley and the Wampler are worth it, but they are definitely more money. But again, let us know in the comments. What would you use for a Blues Junior for pedals? Do you not need any of this? Do you need all of this and more? Let us know what you like, how you use it. I'm Jack Fawcett. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.